You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Who Did What Now, the history podcast that's not your history class, Betty Sewed, with your host, Katie Charlwood, history harlot and reader of books. Well, uh, impromptu Betty Sewed, yay! Um, because I wanted to do something different, and not at all because I've been incredibly busy and I'm knee deep in research, and I got irrationally mad today because of a book. <laughs> And yeah, so like um, the kids and I were rebuilding furniture or building furniture, I should say, uh, for their bedrooms. We've got all that put together. It's not all finished, but, you know, it's, it's a good start. And I've been doing homework and trying to get them into like a whole routine, which in itself is it's 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 a lot. Also, in addition, furthermore, I've got like a super secret, super secret eh, project coming up. And I've been I've been working on that. I've been doing some like research and stuff some research lots of research and stuff and i still don't have a fully functioning worktop no a fully functioning laptop jesus christ fuck me seriously and yeah so i'm still recording this on my phone and i'm really sorry about that but that's that's just how it is that being said (sighs) that being said i do want to thank everybody everybody (sighs) like I cannot express to you just how much joy and, um, I don't want to say confidence, but, like, good feelings from all, like, the positive stuff you all have been saying in the, uh, in, like, the reviews. Because you've been reading and reviewing five stars on, like, Spotify and, what's the other one? Apple Podcasts. And it's just, they're so lovely. I mean, I know lots of podcasters, they're like, It's all for the business end. It's nothing to do with our ego. I'll be honest with you. It is for the business end. But um, my ego thanks you. Because on on the bad days, those reviews really... They really fucking help. You know? Knowing that you're enjoying this. And that I'm creating something that you like. It makes me feel really good about the fact that I'm making this. And I greatly, greatly fucking appreciate all of you. And... um, what I'm going to be doing, because I, I said I would do it, and I don't like to go back on my word, ever, because uh, I was kind of raised a weird way. I don't like to mislead or misinform or lie. They're, they're not kind of my jam or my butter. And I said that once I had 200,000 followers on TikTok, that I was going to do like a giveaway on my on my Instagram, which I am going to do, which I am going to do. I just have to get around to filming a damn video for it. And then working out the logistics because doing it on Instagram is just easier. Just logistically, just like logistically, Instagram just works better for those kind of things. Sorry, my voice is also starting to go, but I'm, I'm going to do my best. But anyway, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking quite your jibber jabber and just fact me. In fact, you, I will. So I thought, let's have a wee bonus, Betty Sewed, because I'm not working and thought, eh, why not? You know how it is. So this is a bitty sode. If you're new here, um, bitty sodes are like the little bits of history that don't quite fit in anywhere else. So if I was to cover the Titanic, say, I doubt I'd have time to cover the whole lavatory situation because it's one episode. I do try and keep it under an hour and there's so much stuff to talk about. I think I'd probably only mention the lose in like a passing comment, but I found this really fucking interesting. And so I'm going to burden you all the information as well. Bathing facilities on the Titanic were interesting and also surprising for the time. Um, like in general, what's quite funny is some of the second class cabins actually had certain first class, um, what do you call it? Like first class, ah, brain, features. So like some second class cabins, they had first class features. And like the reason this was, was because if they had, say, overbooked too many first-class cabins, they could easily put people into the second-class cabins, which were decent, better than most second-class anyway. So very few cabins on the Titanic had private bathtubs. So Captain Edward Smith, he had one with a porcelain tub 
um, that could be filled with, and I quote, fresh water or seawater, both hot and cold. So like he could have a hot bath or he could have a cold sea bath, which I'm sure was very um good for joints or something. I mean, cool. So parlor suites as well, they were like really fucking elaborate and they would have private bathtubs too. And they were on, what was it, B-Deck? And so these parlor suites, they would have, you know, multiple bedrooms, closets, private decks. You know, they were the fucking shit, you know what I mean? But like most passengers, they wouldn't really have um, their own bathing facilities. Like, it just wasn't an option. So they would have to use like communal bathrooms, public bathrooms, and they had special attendants. So, and they were there basically to, you know, sort out the people, but also keep the entire like area clean. So they would disinfect it and clean it after each sort of bather. So in like each deck of the Titanic, they had, they had these communal bathrooms, but like depending on which deck you were on or which uh, class you were part of, sorry, depending on your class, you know, the amount of lavatories, loos and such, they would be greatly reduced the further down the ladder you go. So when a passenger wanted to use a bath, wanted to go for a wee rub-a-dub-dub in a tub, they would have their bedroom steward make an appointment with one of the bath stewards or stewardesses who would then prepare their bath for them. So like first and second class, they had like a fuck ton of like bathtubs at the ready. So people didn't really have to wait when they wanted to have a good wee clean. But all of third class, all 700 of them shared two bathtubs. So like one was for men and one was for women. So there's like 450 men and 200 or so women. And then there was a, whatever kids. So the 400 and something men, they would be in one bathtub and the women would be allocated the other bathtub. But there's no allocation for kids. So like, but most cabins, as I said, even in third class had like wee sinks and stuff in them. So they would be able to like top and tail the kids and stuff like that. You know, basic, basic cleanliness, like really basic stuff. But chances are, if that wasn't happening, like all the kids of the same family, like brothers, sisters, cousins, they would all be chucked in the same tub Cause like, being a part of a royal family might seem enticing, but more often than not, it comes at the expense of everything else, like your freedom, your privacy, and sometimes even your head. Wondery's new podcast, Even the Royals, pulls back the curtain on royal families, past and present, from all over the world, to show you the darker side of what it means to be royalty. From icons like Grace Kelly, Oscar-winning actress turned Princess of Monaco, who the world saw as the ultimate good girl. She mastered playing a happy wife and mother, but beneath it all, she was desperately lonely. Grace spent her whole life working towards perfection, and it ultimately cost her her happiness. Or King Ludwig II from Bavaria. He was only 18 when his father died, leaving the crown to him and a duty to rule that he never wanted. He refused to lead and used the funds from the royal treasury to further his extreme love of opera. But this choice eventually cost him the crown and his life. Follow Even the Royals on the Wondery app, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge Even the Royals ad-free right now on Wondery+. Plus. <sighs> like, I was still doing that with my kids. Like, like I remember having to share baths with my cousins in, like, the late 80s, early 90s. So, like, it, you know, it didn't stop. So, like, continuing with the toilet scenario, this is, like, so toilets. This is actually really interesting, toilets, right? So the toilets on the Titanic, like, for first and second class, they were manual, right? So, the like, what we would have, you would pull the thing and it would flush. Third class, however, had automated toilets. And you're thinking, that's a bit fancy for third class. How come they got the wee fancy automated toilets and the uh, first and second class didn't? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'll tell you. The toilets in third class had automated flushing because the ship designers and such were concerned that the third class passengers 
would have little to no sort of familiarity, would have little to no sort of interaction with a toilet. Like they wouldn't have seen a toilet because they're so poor. You know, they would have been, um, so they assume, so like the assumption was, and maybe rightly so in some cases, that most of the, the lower class folk, they would have used chamber pots and outhouses, which sort of modern society had sort of moved on from. And as such, third class passengers wouldn't have known necessarily that they needed to actually flush the toilets. And so automated toilets, the flushing is done for them. In order to like help sort of to, you know, manoeuvre these things, matron Catherine Wallace had been given the duty, like her job was to help the steerage passengers like learn how to use toilets, you know, and assist them with basic cleanliness stuff. Um, like, I don't know if you know, um, it is talk- like when third class passengers, before they could get on the ship, they had to go through like this intense cleanliness inspection like they did like they were checking them for like lice and nets and probably scabies as well like it was a full thing because they didn't want you know bugs on the ship and they wanted to make sure everybody was clean not so fun fact about Catherine Wallace was when the ship went down she refused to leave the passengers in third class and because she wouldn't leave them she died alongside them probably giving comfort to some of those who were panicking and terrified but in other news, before I start crying, as we know, the Titanic was the the height of luxury. It was the most luxurious and fucking expensive ship. It was five-star hotel on the ocean. And in addition to, you know, having private bathtubs and fine dining and all that malarkey, first-class passengers had swimming baths. And you're thinking, okay, yeah. I'm sure uh, you've all heard the joke about, oh, the swimming pool in the Titanic is still full of water, which honestly is the most annoying joke. A really fucking disrespectful joke. So many people lost their lives. This horrific catastrophe. Maybe don't make insensitive jokes about it. I don't know, I just find it really, apart from the fact it's really annoying because we've all heard it like 500 times. Anyway, Turkish baths. There was Turkish baths. Victorian Turkish bath on the Titanic. So first class passengers would be able to use it um, for an additional fee. They would be able to enjoy the facilities. So the Turkish bath, fuck me, the Turkish bath had steam and massage rooms and an electric bath. So the electric bath was um, meant to warm the body. So it, it it's, it wasn't like a bath bath, but it basically kind of looked like an iron lung or or like like how a tanning bed, you know, that kind of that kind of thing. Um, so the obviously male and female passengers they wouldn't go to the, the the Turkish baths at the same time. They would be allocated times. So because there would be three male attendants and two female attendants, you know, because it would have been unseemly for a man to be attending a woman at the the Turkish baths. But yeah, it was a it was a fun one. And so, and that is the story of toilets on the Titanic. Uh, I couldn't help myself. I'm so sorry. And thus ends our story of toilets on the Titanic. I hope you liked this bitty sword, uh, bonus bitty sword, by the way. If you liked this wee bitty sword, don't forget to rate and review five stars. You can follow me on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, more people on Instagram, please, because I really need to figure out how to do the Instagram stuff because I need more reach I think I need to be everywhere all at once um everything ever all at once which I really want to see and don't forget if you like today's video you can nope nope I'm clearly tired oh my goodness don't forget if you liked today's episode you can always rate and review me five stars on Spotify Apple Podcasts all the good places and don't forget you can follow me on the social medias I am on the Twitter uh who did what now PD and I am on Facebook Instagram and TikTok as who did what now pod so that's fun that's fun I've actually started posting to Instagram again yay for everybody 
Uh, before I go, I'm gonna do a d recommendations. Yay! Everyone's favorite. So I'm actually gonna recommend、um, two podcasts for you for listening, sticking with theme. We have Aaron, my friend who I met on a plane. Even though I usually don't talk to people when I travel, I, I, it's fine. Aaron has the Time to Talk Titanic podcast, so go check that out. And of course, we have lovely Melissa and God's Heroes. It is a, it is a deep dive.、Um, her her first season was just absolutely amazing, and you can also watch her on TikTok, Melissa Fair Lady. Go check her out. So watching, um, if you're not already watching Midnight, go watch Midnight if it's your thing. If it's not your thing, The Gilded Age is pretty good. You should go check it out. And and reading wise. I'm going to recommend a book that I just received I think, a week ago or so, and it is "Advice from Strangers" by Rachel Paris. It's a little bit different to what I normally recommend, but、um, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it, and I didn't have to pay custom fees to get it, which was really nice. I'd pre-ordered it、um, because I wanted a signed one,、um, but it's fine. It's fine. I love Rachel Paris and I love her work, and I'm hoping to have a better quality thing next time. And and.、Um, Hopefully, next time you hear from me, it will be from my, you know, cheap little setup, as opposed to on my phone, as opposed to hiding, as opposed to on my phone in the corner of my bedroom, hoping my bed doesn't creak. And with that, I am going. And with that, I am going to bid you farewell, and I will chat to you next time. Adios, au revoir, vous êtes mes amis, mes amis. Bye bye.